this is Stacy with Gooseberry Bridge Farm. Welcome to my pantry. Um, this is my third pantry tour that I've done. Not this year. I did one last January and one the year before, I think also in January. This is uh, now December, so there's a little bit more food in here than there normally is when I do these. Uh, I'm going to take you through, answer some of the questions that we got on Instagram, and look at all the food. Okay, I'm going to start over here on the far end of the pantry. We have um, four shelves here and then there's this shelf that does not hold as much weight but has some stuff on it, a cup, and then we have the underneath section that I'm going to talk about also and behind me there are metal shelves and other stuff. So over here, this area that just looks like a mess, partly is a mess, this is a, this is a desk, and so there's stuff in the desk but um these crates are full of canning um mostly rings some lids uh this is fermentation weights like this guy and i've got my um fermentation lids and these lids actually just make mason jars into like a gnat trap these are free jars of marshmallows hope the kids don't notice um and there's some other stuff here like our old school strainer and behind that you can see my four jars lids there which I will link in the description but behind that there's our big stash of lids I'll just drop that uh, right there anyway back there rings lids all of the lids that we have um, accumulated after we pick up this stuff here after the 20 20 lid shortage in 2021 even all right i got it back anyway after the lid shortage we now keep a couple years worth of lids i prefer the four jars lids but we have other lid brands back there too just in case um, i have all these little green baskets that i store here in the winter but in the summer i use them when like i'm ripening or storing cherry tomatoes or even uh, small sauce tomatoes it, it allows me to fit more tomatoes on this shelf by putting them in those little baskets so back up a shelf this shelf is a little it's making me a little twitchy because this stuff in the corner here is um tomato soup and all of my other tomato products are way over there and i don't like that it's so far away but here we are uh, I didn't really want to move them. I moved almost everything this week and that just didn't get moved. So these are all canned peaches. They're different colors and shapes because they were different types of peaches, different um, ages. This one that's a little discolored is the oldest. Those are 2021 peaches and I have reorganized them so that there's, there's a little section of 2021 here and all the rest are from this year. Um, this one it's a good uh, discussion topic. We Something called siphoning happened when we were canning this one. That is why there is so much liquid gone from the jar. It happens because of inconsistencies with the temperatures when you're canning. Um, it is not... As long as the jar seals, it's still safe to eat, but it is going to be eaten first, which is why it is here next to the oldest ones. We have that, and then the ones that, are, that did better um, with the siphoning are... To the right. Then over here, I'm going to go up to this post for right now, even though this section goes over further. These are freeze-dried strawberries from the store. When we get up a shelf, we'll see our freeze-dried strawberries. And then uh, these are freeze-dried peaches, which we also purchased, where these little white peaches, which to can white peaches, you need to add acid because they are less acidic than yellow peaches. But these are um, our peaches. The yellow peaches are store peaches. So over here, these are freeze-dried peaches, which are amazing. Um, so up a shelf, these are our freeze-dried strawberries from our garden. So you can see the size difference. They're a different variety, and just generally homegrown strawberries are a little smaller. So we've got a couple rows of those. Then this is all strawberry jam from our strawberries. Um, when you're picking like a limited amount a day and have to save them up to make something, that does really well to make jam because you can put 
the sugar on the strawberries, cut them up, put the sugar on, and the sugar helps preserve them in the refrigerator. And then when you're ready to make jam, you don't just don't add as much sugar to make the jam. I've got a whole video on free on strawberry jam and how we do that without pectin. Um, this next section right here is um, apple pie filling. Some of those are uh, 2019 that I found in my cleaning recently. Yeah, we've got a couple 2019s. I have no issue eating those. Um, they are fine. Uh, I mean, technically, they only last 12 months, but we've been eating them and they're cool. But we just moved them to the front. Most of them are newer than that, but I just found a couple old ones in the back, and that's kind of the reason that we rearrange everything every once in a while. You get up here, same thing with the peaches. That's peaches that we canned for high filling. Um, unlike the apples, we did not add the thickener to the peaches when we canned them. So they are something we would take and dump out in a pot and add some clear gel thickener to that. They can better without it. So we just didn't put it in, but we would add it to the peaches in light syrup. And then we would have a pie filling or a cobbler filling, or we could just eat them. The ones right next to them that are smaller are our peaches right there, just like the ones down here. And we just did a few quarts. Next to that is blackberries. Most of those are blackberry pie fillings that are a few years old and we really need to eat them. So I kind of I move them to the front. Right next to that, you can see that off color little jar right here. This is strawberry pie filling. Strawberries really don't hold their color well with any light at all. So I have that one showing because it was already faded, but I hid all of the other strawberries back in the back and they're still red. So I just don't get them out. I just have that one there to show myself where they are. Next to that, there's a few quarts of freeze dried blackberries. We've used most of those. We don't really like to eat them because of the seeds, but they are good. But you can also use them to make other things like blackberry jelly, or um, we've been using them for blackberry lemonade. We basically infuse water with them and then make lemonade from the blackberry water and it is super yummy. Next to that is a little section of marmalade that goes back a little ways. And then this is peach sauce, like applesauce but peaches, and that goes to here-ish. Some, the, some of these are peach sauce too, but it's a darker color. Yeah, that's peach sauce. Um, these little signs are now completely incorrect. I need to work on getting them off, but they're sticky. Okay, I'm going to move on to section number two, middle, I don't know, the next one. The one I am standing in front of. Um, let's see if I can do this with me in the video. Probably not. Applesauce. Mushrooms. Freeze-dried. Sweet potatoes. Now I have a lot more to talk about, so I'm going to turn this around. Okay, so those are sweet potatoes. And as you can see, they are not the right color. Um, that is because sweet potatoes and carrots, we learned, both bleach out really badly and very quickly after they're freeze-dried. So ideally, they need to be kept in mylar. But we had already stored these in glass, and they are um, they're bleached out, but they still taste the same. I'm sure there's some nutritional loss with the color, but if you look behind them, there's some carrots... Um, that are still orange and if you go back another layer those are just baby carrots so they were white partly because of that um, but if you go back further than that there are um, more potatoes sweet potatoes and carrots and they are actually orange um, these are our morel mushrooms that we freeze-dried we only got a couple jars of those they are amazing I can't reach them but they're awesome um, kind of hoarding them this is all 2022 applesauce and then let's go down a level. We'll start over here. We've got some 2020 pickles here. These are dill. Um, they're kind of soggy at this point. But what we've been using them for is like um, just taking a whole jar and dumping it in to marinate a chicken. And it's amazing. I kind of went overboard with the pickles in 2020. Um, we've got it under control now. <laughs> and <laughs> these are... Um, dill pickled beans and these are all these pickles are made with our dill just a few peppercorns and some of our garlic all the dill the these are bread and butter pickles 
Some of these are a little cloudy looking. Those are the older ones. They're still fine to eat. Um, but that's part part of why they're cloudy is because they're bread because they're bread and butter pickles, and there's other ingredients in there, like a lot of sugar, compared to this new 2022 um, dill. I think that's a dill pickle. Um, I also did some other flavors in 2022. I'll talk about it in a second. And then these are sweet relish up here and back there. This relish has more like a turmeric in it that made it kind of weird, darker color than. Um, that was a 2021 relish. We still have a few more of those. And then these back here are like lighter green. There you go. Um, greenish, whitish. Those are the 2022 relish that I did not add turmeric to. Um, the relish you buy at the store that's so bright green, that's food coloring. So that's, this is what real relish looks like. So these pickles are, let's see if I can pull one out without knocking this stuff over, ranch pickles. And I made those by putting in all of the seasonings um, and herbs that I would have put into ranch dressing. So pepper, garlic, there's parsley, there are chives in there, all fresh from our garden, and um, also a grape leaf that's supposed to help with crispness. Okay, next section we have pickled Thai chili peppers, pickled jalapenos, Lots more pickled jalapenos, pickled jalapeno relish, cowboy candy, which is sweet pickled jalapenos. Cowboy candy with really, really pretty peppers. Look at that. Um, this is all organized in order of variety of pickled pepper and age. So these are older than these, these are older than these, these are older than these, and then we can know which ones to use first, except <laughs> this is a 2019 that's just kind of stuck out there on the end. Um, I make cra people crazy with my jars hanging off the ledges, but they're very, um, they're not going anywhere unless we have a catastrophic earthquake, so we're not going to talk about that. All right, now we're down on the bottom shelf of this section. This is mostly jams and jellies, but this right here is all, um, lemon and lime juice that was canned. Canning, the canning process does alter the vitamin C in lemon and lime juice. So if you have the ability to, freezing it would be better um, nutritionally, but this works also for using it in recipes or things you're gonna cook anyway. Um, this section is, these are all just different jams and jellies. It goes up to about here, and then I've got a random pickle jar there because I needed it a space for it, <laughs> pickled carrots. Um, but this section is a section of older jams and jellies and syrups that we're going to use first. But these are all from this year. So this is, and you, you, I already showed you the strawberry jam that we add to this, which is like almost as big as this whole section. But this is all peach jam. I believe this is, yeah, peach jelly on top. There's also some smaller peach jams. This section is uh, blackberry, seedless blackberry jam blackberry jam with the seeds still in it and um there was some other kind of blackberry jelly maybe blackberry jelly right there and then we have mulberry um jelly there's a little row of that in there then we have peach jelly which peach jelly is made from the skins and pits where peach jam is made from the whole fruit then we've got a couple jars of pear butter here that's kind of weird looking, but it's fine. From our pears, we've just got two half pints of that left. And then this is grape jelly from our grapes. We've got three half pints of that. So it's just some of the jellies just make a really small amount, but I'm excited about this. So this might actually be grape jam. Yeah, I know it's jelly. Um, cherry jam. And then the rest of these are syrups. Um, lilac, elderflower, and peach, and spiced peach. Uh, simple syrups. So they were all of them are simple syrups except for this one that is um, more of a, this one was thickened, but it kind of ended up turning into a jelly. It's a little weird. Oh, and I've got this hidden back here. This, nope, that's the spice. Anyway, somewhere in here hidden is the uh, pureed strawberry jam, which is so good. So then we get into the section of older jams 
and jellies. Like this is 2021 apple pie jam. Um, there's a ground cherry jam. My random jar of carrot, pickled carrots. All of those. Most of the rest of that is blackberry or blackberry apple. Yeah, apple, blackberry, jelly. Those are good. But I'm just trying to get the kids to use those first before we get into all of this and all of that. Okay, I'm going to keep going on this last section um, and then we're going to go up top and talk about that and underneath the shelves. Okay, so top here, this is salsa. 2021, 2022, 2021 um, tomato sauce uh, and spaghetti sauce and stewed tomatoes in there. It's kind of a mismatch of everything because it was quartz from 2021. This section here is um, freeze dried red onions, freeze dried tomato sauce right there. And then those are freeze dried tomatoes kind of hiding behind the post. Those are like chunks of tomatoes that we use for salads and things. Here is our 2022 freeze dried green beans. The very last of the 2020 pressure canned green beans because I don't like to pressure can green beans now that I have a freeze dryer. Um, we have freeze dried squash, loofah, young loofah, which is basically eaten like a zucchini. Um, and we got quite a few of these up this year. There's a whole bunch back there. Squash and zucchini. It's mostly yellow zucchini, so all zucchini. This one is a different kind of loofah. There's a couple jars of okra, and then this is all sweet onions. It's dried. All right, so the bottom shelf. This is honey. Most all of it, but these little jars are our honey. Um, I tried to put all the 2021 honey down here, but some of it's 2022. Then we have more squash zucchini a few green beans some okra like kind of what didn't fit on the other shelf this is the only jar of beans besides there's a half gallon of beans behind this one and this one you can see is mixed but we eat it all together so it doesn't matter these are freeze-dried zucchini pickles and this is one jar of freeze-dried cucumbers not a clue what i'm going to do with those behind all of this is freeze-dried sweet peppers and there's a couple pints of freeze-dried jalapenos um, it can be used in any kind of recipe. This is all freeze-dried broth. This is a mixture, again, freeze-dried salsa. There's freeze-dried basil. It's kind of just a mismatch that I needed to get um, into a jar, so it's all in there. I don't really know what we'll do with this, but it, it probably tastes good. Just jalapenos, all that white is garlic, and then the salsa, we could probably throw it in some chicken or something. It'd be good. This is pressure canned chili i just have four jars of that i tried to make some more but we had some issues with the pressure canner this is all freeze-dried greens except for these two jars of broccoli which freeze-dried broccoli works really well um this is kale there's also spinach parsley and celery powder kale and spinach can be used in pretty much anything because they don't put a lot of flavor into things, but the celery and the parsley I feel a little more careful with. Teddy's here to say hi. You want to say hi, Teddy? Mm -hmm. Never mind. Not saying hi. Okay. All right, we're going to go up to the top shelf now. You can see all the way across, we have stuff on the top shelf, and all of this hanging down is lavender that I need to get put away, but it's kind of pretty in here. We have so much lavender, I don't really, I'm not really motivated to do that. All right, top shelf, three pints of freeze-dried goat milk. That's all we have left from last year. We're saving it. It's freeze-dried. It's still good. It does not taste very good, but we use it for emergencies, uh, animal babies and whatnot. They can still drink it. Um, it just tastes like old goat milk. Uh, the next is raw eggs. If you've watched my pantry tours before, you can see the scrambled cooked eggs are not there anymore. That's because they did not keep as well. I don't know if it was the light in the jars or if they were just not completely freeze-dried. They don't taste very good anymore. So we are slowly um, rehydrating them and feeding them to the chickens who don't seem to mind. They taste funky. Um, this is all, almost all salsa. There's actually some other stuff up there. 
um, more 2022 salsa so when we use this up we'll pull that down and this is all the 2022 half spaghetti sauce which is seasoned and half plain tomato sauce um, that we can pull down whenever we use up this last of the old stuff that keeps us from using the new ones since I put it up so high. We've got a little section of herb salts and we've got a ridiculous amount of hot sauce. Those are half pints so it's really not that ridiculous but it also kind of is. Um, but it's so good and I've still got a lot of that in the fridge too because it keeps a very long time in the refrigerator. Then we have the 2022 honey. These are quartz and a, there's four half gallons and then these are freeze-dried white potatoes that we grew. Um, they just kind of ended up up there and we don't really we need them yet so there they are. All right now we're back to the bottom shelf. We already went over the weird jar storage area so down here we're getting into stuff we don't grow. These are um, sprouting seeds for your microgreens and sprouts. This is some Azure standard stuff in jars. We've got rice and there's some beans in there. This entire box is chocolate chips from Costco and from Azure um, that I'm kind of hiding in a new spot because kids haven't figured out they're there yet. Um, next to that, this area is all, you know, hiding in plain sight. This is all fermenting uh, apple cider vinegar from apple scraps, from all of the applesauce and stuff we made in the fall. They're not quite done. I just checked on them yesterday. Some are a little further along. Like this one looks further along, but uh, behind that is a secret stash of small apple sauces. You're not listening, are you, Teddy? <laughs> Under that is lemongrass in a like a tote sealed thing that is um, for tea. We have various honeys here, um, infused honeys. This is garlic fermented honey that used to have a one of these lids, but it doesn't anymore because it's done. Um, and these are um, lilac infused honey. Lilacs are edible, so you can eat the whole thing. And it's a little bit fermented, which is good in honey. These are freeze dried foods that we have started eating and need to finish. Uh, some potatoes, some onions, some broth, and I don't know what that one is. Um, these are infusing oils, where I ran out of room in my infused oils cabinet. So this one's lavender, and this one is lilac, which really needs to be strained. But that's the fun part about infusing oils, is that they you can let it go as long as you want. That's from May. So, um, thanks for that, Teddy. These are... Um, various squash we grew, Long Island cheese, pumpkins, these were actually grown by a friend, um, candy roaster squash, then we've got some butternuts and some what I call yamkins, and this little weird green one was a volunteer in our yard, and it wasn't quite mature when it froze, but um, I, I'm assuming it's a cross. And that's how it ended up in our yard. This little section here is some stuff I need to put away, but these are herb salts that we're currently using. Um, some very old jalapeno jelly that I found cleaning that we might, may or may not use. We're gonna case by case basis that. This is another jar of pickles that was kind of old. And these are applesauce that was not very good. So we use it for baking. Um, and I need to make something with it, so that's why it is there. You get over here, these are navy beans and other various beans. Those are actually the 2021 beans that I never got out of the shells. And then we also have all of these. I'm gonna be trying um, some other methods to get those out soon. I've got this curtain pulled open to help with our light in here. Normally that is a room darkening curtain that is not in the way and is close to darken the room but we need better light for filming so there's all our scrambled eggs i was telling you about this bucket right here is stuff that we need to use um use first either i didn't label it in the mailer bag or it feels um like it's not keeping its stain dry so i was going to open it first 
Um, all of these milk crates that go all the way up, up there are uh, Mylar bag food storage. So they're all freeze dried. There's lots of chili. Um, actually, I've got my inventory of this, so I'll just show you that. All right, there we go. Mylar bags. This doesn't help. Well, anyway, chili, blackberries, salsa, tomato soup, watermelon, green beans, zucchini, uh, zucchini noodles, raw eggs, carrots, diced tomatoes, mixed veggies, like all sorts of stuff. All right, last shelf is the floor. Um, so we have some buckets here. We have um, transitioned our whole family to gluten-free, so there's not actually flour in that bucket. Thanks, Teddy. That's nice of you. Um, that's sorghum flour or sorghum grain. There's millet in one bucket. This bucket is sugar. There's some rice. These are gluten-free oats. Um, there's also some cornmeal and some other stuff back there. Teddy came to help. These crates are my new system for holding uh, empty jars. It's working pretty well so far. It's not going to work so well once more of them are emptied, but I'm hoping that once enough are emptied, and as you can kind of tell by looking at this, there are like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half full milk crates of jars. Um, there is not that much space on these shelves at all. We just do not have room to store all of the jars when they're full. Um, so a lot of that, when those jars were full, was stacked on the floor. We are going to be adding more shelves at some point because this is just not enough. Um, anyway, so more jars, then hopefully we'll be able to store the empties next to the full ones. The main issue with that is like you take out, you know, one of these, one of these, one of these, one of these, and then you have all these jars to put away, but no big space to put them in. So I end up having to scoot everything down and make sections for empties um, which is why it's good to have a buffer of uh, milk crates <laughs> so hey what are you doing with the scissors bud uh. no not right now put it back um okay so in these totes here one of them has more jars a pressure cooker and inside of there is some sugar um we like to keep a lot of sugar on hand because we feed it to our bees and we bake a lot and we keep a ridiculous amount of sugar usually. Anyway, and the next tote over has um, chips and crackers and that sort of thing and for fun. Down at the end of the pantry we have some totes or some crates still. These are onions. You can see they're growing because this is not the best environment for them. We were trying to freeze dry them all but didn't get to it. Um, there's two crates of sweet potatoes that are fine from our garden and last year the sweet potatoes did fine in here all winter. Behind that there's a couple crates full of loofahs, a whole bunch of paper plates, flower pressing stuff, and this tote has more oats in it. I think those are quick oats. What do you think Teddy? Quick oats? Yeah, anyway, and then we've got some extra got baskets, aprons. This tote is actually full of dehydrated chicken feet that we feed to the dogs. And I'm thinking I'm gonna need a whole nother video to go through this side, but I'll give you a really quick overview. So down here, grain mill, uh, sous vide, some other appliances. Obviously lots and lots of rims. We don't keep rims on the canned goods. This whole shelf with my beautiful Star Wars curtain repurposed there is mostly freeze-dried herbs. Like, both of these boxes are freeze-dried herbs. This is freeze-dried crushed basil, freeze-dried parsley, freeze-dried chives. Um, there's also freeze-dried tomato powder, green tomato powder, and then some regular dried herbs like rosemary, and I don't even know what else. <laughs> They're all herbs, and I don't really like having to keep them here because I can't see what I have but I had to move them off of the shelves behind me because of obvious reasons. This shelf has um, a lot of stuff. So this is mostly almond flour, coconut flour. Um, there's a couple bags of quick oats. 
and some other organic oats. But then all of these little jars are mostly like extra seasonings. There's some peppercorns. This is popcorn that we grew. This is citric acid that we use in canning and cheese making. Popcorn! Yep, popcorn. Um, this is cumin, obviously. Up here there's like pizza seasoning and nutritional yeast and Italian seasoning and taco seasoning and all sorts of stuff that we buy in bulk and then I put it in these jars. And then this is um, freeze-dried lemon zest. And we have two more. We have a bunch of dried peppers and then this box is just here to sit on top of these other jars with some more of that kind of stuff. We go above that. We have all of the Ziploc bags and parchment paper and foil that we could ever need. This section is all packaging for baked goods for sale and storage up there. Stuff we don't want the kids to reach. Pressure cooker, um, beans from the store, and that looks like it's gonna fall off, but it's really not my crock pot stash. So then we go to this side. We've got some empty stuff on the bottom, then um, vinegar. Uh, pasta, muffin tins, some snacks, all sorts of small appliances, choppers, apple, peeler, quarter, whatever, more appliances. All these appliances I really want to get out of here so that I can fit more food, but hey. Um, pasta again. These are all beans that we've grown, so they're very pretty. I'll have to show you. Look at that. Mixed dry beans. Some of them we didn't grow, I guess. There's some chickpeas. We haven't grown chickpeas, but there's some other dried beans. Up a shelf and we have tea and coffee, dandelion tea, olive oil, griddle. I don't think there's anything in that box. Popsicle molds, pecan shells from smoking, waffle iron, batteries, soap and lotion making, and big dishes. Okay, one more shelf. Two more shelves. I lied. So, another shelf. Yes, buddy. All right, last shelf. Convenience, pantry, um, snacks. I've got a little fruit thing here full of bars and stuff I don't want the kids to reach. We've got oil, um, some taco shells, cookies, lemon juice, garlic, organic ketchup, which I could make, but hey, here we are. Conveniency beans, um, discount store dressing. We do usually make our own, but here we are. This is so much easier. Um, seasonings and nut butters, hummus mix, organic mustard, more dressings. These were 50s in the bottle, so when they get that cheap and they're not even expired, we buy them all. Um, thanks for your help, Teddy. And these are various seeds, sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, and sunflower, and probably some flax. The bottom shelf is stuff I really need to clean out. Most of these are homemade vinegars, and then there's some coconut oil. Oh, Chetty's checking out this dressing. All right, hope you enjoyed my pantry tour. I'm going to be doing some other pantry videos this month-ish. You know how I've been with YouTube. We're hoping to get better now. See you next time.